study after study is coming out these days showing us that Monsanto's Roundup is causing cancer and other very severe neurological defects. Monsanto adamantly denies all of these charges. However, they can't deny the reality of science. Joining me now to talk about this is Howard Nations. Howard, Monsanto has done a phenomenal job for decades now of keeping the public in the dark about the dangers of Roundup. Uh, luckily, just in the last, I, I'd say probably 12 months, we're finally getting organizations, the World Health Organization, yeah. who has looked at this and said, whoa, 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 this is not a safe product. We've got articles coming out now several times a week. Uh, lay out the Roundup story. What do we know now that we may not have known, you know, 18 months ago? Well, as you say, the World Health Organization, its cancer research arm, which is the International Agency for Research on Cancer in Lyon, France, announced that glyphosate, the world's most widely used herbicide is probably, quote, probably carcinogenic to humans, end quote. Glyphosate is the main ingredient in Monsanto's Roundup herbicide. Now, Monsanto, the world's largest seller of glyphosate, accused the IARC of cherry picking data. Monsanto was outraged. You can't imagine how outraged they were that they'd been caught. But the IARC, reviews carcinogenicity of industrial chemicals in food. On March 20th, a panel of international experts reported findings of five agricultural chemicals in the category of organophosphates, one of which is uh, the uh, Roundup product. They published the article in Lancet Oncology. Now, Lancet is one of the world's most respected medical journals. Glyphosate was determined to be, quote, probably carcinogenic in humans, end quote. That's a, a 2A category, uh, which means that they had limited evidence uh, of uh, the link in humans from the studies, but the evidence from the animal studies showed tumors in mice and rats and, and DNA damage to human cells. So it led to that 2A finding of, po of probably, as opposed to possibly, probably carcinogenic. And, and one of the things that's interesting is that in these studies with the, the uh, mice and rats, they use mice and rats because their you know, chemical makeup is very similar to those in humans, which means when they see it happen in mice and rats, it is very likely that it would happen in human beings. And I know, right. you know we do have a lot of people against animal testing, but you know, this is about as spot on as you can get aside from taking yeah. human beings and putting them in a laboratory and spraying them with Roundup and seeing what happens. So, you know, they slap this label on there probably because they can't obviously say definitively because we're not doing human testing on this. And so Monsanto, as you pointed out, they got furious, absolutely up in arms. They say there is no way this stuff is marketed as safe. It is environmentally friendly. What are you talking about? And I, one of the things I love is that Monsanto, just like every other industry, when they get popped with something, they say, okay, well, we're going to take charge. They created this glyphosate task force right. that, that they're running that comes out and says, well, well, our little task force, this glyphosate task force, it says everything's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> has anything else happened uh, you know, is there any weight to anything that Monsanto says? Well, not surprisingly, Monsanto claimed that the relevant scientific data was excluded from the IARC uh, report in that they disregarded dozens of scientific studies, uh, specifically genetic toxicity studies. Guess what IARC chose to ignore? They ignored the industry finance and industry submitted studies. As true scientists, they considered only peer-reviewed publications and government reports. This is the difference between scientists and politicians that Mon Monsanto can buy. Uh, there was also another, Mother Earth Ner News just reported that there's a new, a new study out of France that demonstrates that glyphosate-based herbicides are toxic to human reproductive cells. They create risk of infertility, low sperm count, and prostate or testicular cancer. Now this study was reported in toxicology, which is the most esteemed journal in that field. And it shows that it, 
now listen to this, it shows that at low levels that are currently EPA approved, within EPA guidelines, the use of Roundup on our food could cause DNA damage, endocrine dis disruption, and cell death from approved products. And what's really interesting here, too, is that, you know, uh, especially now that we're entering uh, summertime and springtime, we see commercials for Roundup on television constantly. There is not a single warning in any of those commercials. You know, at least when we see pharmaceutical commercials, they've got the little blurb in there saying, by the way, this pill is probably going to cause a lot more damage than it uh, uh, solves in your body. But with Roundup, there are absolutely no warnings. They do not have to disclose anything, any of this right. science that we're discussing. And uh, part of that comes back to the fact that right now, neither the EPA nor the FDA are regulating this product in any way uh, as far, in terms of it being sprayed on our food supply and then fed to us. So right, right now, it really is the, the Wild West with Monsanto and Roundup because there are no limits to who they can sell it to, how much can be used, and how much we can be exposed to. And, uh, you know, that seems, uh, first of all, it just seems outlandish that we're not even, you know, proposing anything at this point to deal with the toxicology and the exposure to humans. And most people don't know. Uh, so, so what do we do? I mean, wh what's the step from there? You know, the only people that are really giving Monsanto a hard time are the French. Uh, the French studies, the, the, uh, the French uh, regulatory agencies. But R Roundup and glyphosate products have been used in the United States since 1970. Today they're using 100 million pounds a year that are being sprayed in farms and in yards all over the United States. Now their big deal was they genetically modified crops for corn, soy, and cotton, and they, so that they became resistant to uh, glyphosate. The uh, Monsanto claimed that this would reduce the use of her herbicides, but the weeds that they're supposed to be killing also developed a resistance to glyphosate, so they have to use more herbicides to kill, to kill the weeds. Monsanto petitioned the EPA. Now you talk about regulatory. Monsanto petitioned the EPA. The EPA approved a 20 times increase in legal residue limits for food crops. Then to, to expand their base, Monsanto encouraged the use of Roundup as a desiccant, which is used to dry out crops. The result was they used to just be sprayed on GMO crops. Now they're sprayed on non-GMO crops such as wheat, barley, oats, flax, peas, lentils, dry beans, everything. The result of that has increased the use over a 15-year period uh, of, of Roundup in the United States by 527 million pounds. Now here's where, again, the French got them. Monsanto falsified data in order to, to expand their base even further. They, they falsified data on Roundup safety and marketed to park departments, and this is what you're talking about in the United States, the advertising you see. They advertised to park departments, to consumers, as environmentally friendly and biodegradable to encourage use on roadsides, playgrounds, golf courses, schoolyards, and our own lawn, lawns and home gardens. The French court ruled that these particular marketing claims were false advertising. You know, I, I wish we could see something like that happen in the United States, especially because a lot of the studies that have been done are focusing primarily on the consumption of crops that have been exposed to glyphosate. Right. And, and as you mentioned, that, that list of uh, uh, food, food products there, uh, a lot of those people may think, well, I don't necessarily eat barley. Yeah. Well, guess what? Those are the roots of a lot of the foods made in the United States. So it, it gets into essentially the food chain and it yeah. builds from there. You know, there, there's a buildup of it. But, but again, that's just consumption. What we also have to worry about is exposure to the chemical itself. Yeah. You know, you, you may not eat anything that has glyphosate on it, 
But if you're walking through a park that has been sprayed, right. you I, I mean, if you've ever smelled Roundup, you know it is a very, yeah. very strong aroma. If you get it on your skin, it almost seems to seep through your skin. And it is detectable in the human bloodstream 30 minutes after exposure. 30 Good. minutes. It does not take long for this to get into your system and be detectable. I mean, th that is phenomenally fast. And so, you know, whether it's through uh, direct contact, through breathing in the chemicals, or through consumption, there almost is no escape. And what we know now is it's not even just cancers, is it? I mean, there is just a, a laundry list of diseases, conditions caused by exposure to Monsanto's Roundup. Yeah, anyone think that thinks they're not being exposed to Roundup, it's been found, it's in the food we eat, it's in the water we drink, it's in the air we breathe, it's in the playgrounds where our children play. Uh, and the, the whole list, EcoWatch came out with this uh, report where they had found health problems which they attribute to exposure to Roundup and our glyphosate. You ready for this? ADHD, Alzheimer's, birth defects, autism, brain, breast, prostate, and lung cancer, celiac disease, chronic kidney disease, colitis, depression, diabetes, heart disease, hyperthyroidism, inflammatory bowel disease, liver disease, Lou Gehrig's disease, multiple sclerosis, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, Parkinson's, and then infertility, miscarriage, and stillbirth in relationship to pregnancy and respiratory disease. In addition, the weeds have developed Roundup, have, have developed the, their resistance to Roundup, so it doesn't even perform the, the legitimate function for which it was approved in the first place. I mean, when you look at that list of illnesses, it almost seems like it, being around Roundup is worse than, than smoking a cigarette. At yes. this point, comp you know, comparatively, the diseases that it is called, because we know that glyphosate is a neurotoxin. So right. in addition to, to the cancers, which are, you know, the, 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 the big thing that a lot of people focus on, we're looking at neurological symptoms, as you pointed out, you know, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, ADHD, autism. Those things have all been linked in studies, you know, uh, private studies, not industry funded studies, not government studies. Independent studies have proven a correlation. Now, we're working on causation. I know that because it doesn't necessarily mean the same thing, but there is absolutely a correlation between exposure to glyphosate and that huge list of things that you just listed. And so where do we go from here? How do we get action? How do we get the government, to, or the U.S. government, to do what France is doing and say, look, there are problems with this. We have to do something. Well, you start by electing a Democratic Congress because the Republicans will sure as hell never regulate them. But the good news for Monsanto is Bayer's offered $62 billion to buy them. They rejected the offer, but Monsanto may want to rethink rejecting that offer before the world wakes up to the devastating health hazard that Monsanto's peddling to us on a daily basis. Regulations, not going to happen. EPA, as I indicated, at their, their, they found toxicity uh, at and danger and uh, devastating results at levels that are currently uh, approved by the EPA. So it's regulation in the United States from the federal government is not going to happen. And what's interesting too is that uh, yeah, we started off discussing this World Health Organization study. Um, two weeks ago, uh, a World Health Organization subcommittee released a report saying that glyphosate uh, was not necessarily linked to non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, but this little paper they released was only six pages long. I read the whole thing about four times to make sure I was reading it correctly and that the media was getting it correct, and it turns out they weren't. What, what the study said was that we cannot, from the research provided to us, find a link between glyphosate consumption and non-Hodgkin's right. lymphoma. But the media immediately ran with it and said, uh, World Health Organization says no link between glyphosate and cancer. Those were the headlines. Yeah. And it was yeah. absolutely misleading, absolutely not true. And it was only if, you know, like I said, it had to be a, a consumed version of glyphosate over the right. life of whatever plant was being consumed. And it would only look for that one specific form of cancer. I mean, 
the media is playing a big role in the misinformation around this as well. Well, as you said, we see Roundup advertised all the time. Monsanto spends a lot of money with the media in advertising. So it's the golden rule. He who has the gold makes the rules. And they make the rules in the media. They make the rules in federal control of the industry. So there's not a lot there, not a lot of hope on, uh, on the horizon for the uh, consuming public and for the children and for the unborn uh, who's, uh, who are being exposed to this through uh, pregnant women. Well, I know that there are a lot of brilliant lawyers out there who are looking into these these cases, and that, I think, right now is our best hope. Let's get this in the court system. Let's get some relief for the people that have been injured. Howard, uh, fortunately, we are out of time, but thank you for this, and I appreciate everything that you do. A phenomenal story, and we're going to stay on it. Thanks, Farron. Xarelto continues to kill patients while the FDA continues to ignore it. See the story at DrugSafetyNews.com.